On the morning of September 11, 2001, American Airlines Flight 11 departs from Boston to Los Angeles at 7.59 a.m. There are 92 people aboard, including five Al-Qaeda terrorists. One of them is 9-11 ringleader Mohammed Atta, whose name triggers a security alert at the airport. As a result, his bags are detained, but Atta and 10 accomplices board two planes concealing box cutters and knives. At 8.14 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175 also departs from Boston for Los Angeles with 65 people on board. 20 minutes after takeoff, flight attendants aboard the first plane to leave Boston alert ground personnel that the plane has been hijacked. The FBI is immediately notified. At the same time, American Airlines Flight 77 takes off from Dulles International Airport outside of Washington, D.C. At 8.41 a.m., while United Airlines Flight 93 departs from Newark International Airport for San Francisco, air traffic controllers notice the second hijacked plane from Boston deviating from its course. Two passengers manage to make calls from the plane and provide information about the hijacking. At 8.46 a.m., the unimaginable happens. Flight 11 crashes into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Within seconds, emergency crews are dispatched and the immediate evacuation of the North Tower begins. But in the South Tower, people are initially advised not to evacuate the building. Around the same time, Flight 77 from Washington changes its course drastically and is now headed to one of the most protected airspaces in America, the Pentagon. Meanwhile, in Florida, while visiting an elementary school, President George W. Bush is notified of Flight 11's fate. At 9.03 a.m., the hijackers crash the second plane from Boston into the World Trade Center's South Tower. 27 minutes later, President Bush announces that America is under attack. At the same time, Flight 93 from Newark changes its course while flying over Ohio. But by now, the FAA is on high alert and reports the flight as being hijacked. Five minutes after the announcement, hijackers crash Flight 77 into the Pentagon. And for the first time in history, the FAA grounds all flights over or bound for the United States. The unprecedented decision is made by Ben Sliney. It is his first day as the FAA's Chief of Air Traffic Control Operations. The only hijacked plane still in the air is Flight 93. After learning the fate of the other planes, passengers and crew members try to retake the plane. At 9.59 a.m., the world watches in horror as the south tower of the World Trade Center collapses. Only four people from above the 81st floor survive. Meanwhile, the heroic attempt to retake Flight 93 fails, and the plane crashes in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, killing everyone aboard. At 10.28 a.m., Exactly 102 minutes after being struck by Flight 11, the World Trade Center's North Tower also collapses. What follows is one of the largest maritime rescue missions in world history. More than half a million people are transported off the closed Manhattan Island in less than nine hours after hundreds of boats converge in answer to a plea by the Coast Guard. Later that day, at 5.20 p.m., a third building crumbles to the ground as World Trade Center Building 7 collapses after burning for hours. That evening, evening. almost 12 hours after the first plane was hijacked, President Bush addresses America, calling the attacks evil, despicable acts of terror, and declaring that America, its friends and allies, would stand together to win the war against terrorism. Yet we go forward to defend freedom. Over the next 230 days, only 291 of the nearly 3,000 bodies were recovered intact from ground zero. 
it took 3.1 million man hours to clean up the 1.8 million tons of debris. Hidden in the rubble, workers found more than 65,000 personal effects, which helped them identify the deceased. There are still 105 people classified as missing from the World Trade Center site. They will never be found.